Yes, Jesus, I'm praying that this song impresses you for all that you did for me. I just want to get next to you and I seen the way that you took the cross for me. You took my sins, you got up there and you took the loss for me. And I just want to thank you with every little bit in me. I mean it. I ain't just blowing smoke like a chimney. I have no life without you. I trust you. I'll never doubt you. You showed me your grace and mercy. God, you're beyond worthy of all the praise and worship. God, I'm needing you. I'm begging. Yes, I'm pleasing you. I'm praying that I'm pleasing you. I just want to serve you. Yes, in any way I can for Jesus. I only stand. See me as a righteous man of God. So please, our bar God, cleanse me of everything that's not like you. I want to be just like you, my daddy. This world ain't got nothing to offer me. You satisfy me. I surrender fully. I give you all of me. Yes. Jesus, you're my everything. You saved me and erased my pain. Jesus, you're my everything. Jesus Christ, you're my everything. Yes. Jesus, you're my everything. You saved me and erased my pain. Jesus, you're my I'm like a word in a dictionary when I say that I love you cause I mean that you are my father you taught me how to walk on water in the midst of the storms knowing that I can't be bothered because your love is holding me keeping me molding me perfecting me the Holy Spirit he brings out the best in me yes you erase the stress and all the pain in me erase the fornicating and all the sin you made the change in me Jesus I never knew the power of the love you have saving me maturing my brother saving my mom and dad Without you, there's no way that I'm making it. You built this regardless of the test. Lord, I'm taking it. You are my shining light. You gave me the gift of Jesus Christ through him. Yes, you blessed me with eternal life. Yes, eternal life. So with eternal life, it keeps me at peace, even if it's meant for me to die tonight. Jesus, you're my everything. You saved me and erased my pain. Jesus, you're my everything. Jesus Christ, you're my everything, yes. Jesus, you're my everything. You saved me and erased my pain. Jesus, you're my everything. You are my everything. Yes, I remember that. That day you saved me. You heard my cry in the bed. You rocked me like a baby. It was August the 28th at 229 in the morning on the school campus in the dorm. And I couldn't hold that weight that was upon me. But see, you came and got next to me. You came and you rescued me, my Savior, my Lord Jesus Christ. It feels so right having you as my tissue whenever there's some tears to wipe. You turn my dark to bright. You change my wrong to right. Our relationships deeper than spandex were more than tight. <laughs> You're in the Father. He's in you. You're in me and I'm in you. There's there's nothing that we can't make it through because you're all power and control of everything. The maker of the world, creator of boy and girl, you are before and after. I pray you let me serve you on this earth till Jesus comes, the day of the rapture. Yes. Jesus, you're my everything. You saved me and erased my pain. Jesus, you're my everything. Jesus Christ, you're my everything. Yes. Jesus, you're my everything. You saved me and erased my pain. Jesus, you're my You are listening to For A More Radio, your power station with powerful teachings from the Word of God. Good afternoon, my brothers and sisters. Praise God. It is uh, 6 uh, p.m. at my location, uh, Eastern Standard Time, on the 20... I guess this is the 27th of August. Praise God. We're going to honor to be here, 2024. 
uh, whenever you do look at this, this message, you will be able to find out that uh, we are speaking on this night. And I thank God for you. I will be speaking to you tonight on a subject, and I probably will be on this for a while. I have several scriptures, more than I uh, I be able to cover tonight. So I'm looking to doing this uh, a little bit later on, uh, on uh, maybe this couple Wednesday nights. But the subject is thoughts of the heart. Thoughts of the heart. And we will find out through the studying and reading of the Word of God, we will find out all sin, everything happens, starts in your thoughts. So we need to dissect that and get into that. Praise God. Uh, I was looking at some messages before, and I have been on um, one message I covered on uh, July the 17th, the wrath of God against sin. And one thing about that, um, we all have sinned and felt short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. There was only one person that lived a perfect life, and that was none other than Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And because of what he did, and it was God in the flesh, both Son of God and the um, most uh, Son of God and the Son of Man in the flesh. So he was able to uh, get it to sacrifice his body, his shed his blood, that whosoever will that believeth on the Son will have life and. Who do not believe in the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abided on him. So we see that uh, this wrath uh, of sin has been poured out on Jesus Christ. So if you're in Christ, you don't have to go through that judgment of uh, that in the second death, because you pass from life from death into eternal life with Christ. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, things are all become new. And then we talked about uh, the wrath of God. Again, uh, the wrath or the judgment of God, the anger of God upon disobedience and against sin, uh, habitual sin. We know that we, if we do sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. If we confess our sins, He's faithful to forgive us and to cleanse us from unrighteousness because you won't be able to live in this land, in this world, without sin. Something happened. Not obituable, just do practice sin. We're going to talk about that a little bit, about the thoughts and how this thing affects us. It's affect everybody uh, because we all have a thought pattern and whatever we put in our mind, which is our thought, it's settling in. And if we stay on that long enough, praise God, if it's, if, if, if it's not the word of God and it's not the things of God, it will manifest itself. It will materialize in our lives and therefore may cause us to continue to sin. Praise God. And if you fill your mind, your heart, your thought with stuff of this world, I'm telling you, it don't matter. It, it could be all kind of stuff. Uh, don't have to be sexual in nature. It could be greed. It could be uh, uh, you are just so religion religious that you think you got it all right and no one else have it right and no one else can be saved unless they follow what you think is A, B, C, and D. Uh, that's a lot of believers. That a lot of believers think if you if you do certain things, you can't. You're not saved. And and that's I'm so glad that humans is not the judge. God is the judge, and and I'm sure Jesus uh, he, he he said that he I came into my own and my own received me not, but as many as received me to them I gave power to become the sons of God. And I and I thank God that it's not what you do to show that you are born again is but what you believe. In Christ, give your life to Christ. Let me tell you something. Just because you have a title of Christians in your life doesn't mean you are perfect and you're going to live right and, and, and everybody else got problems. The problem is that when people are not saved, they're not living saved, they're not professing to be saved, then that person 
is is hot is cold. That's it. Uh, and, and and but there's a, a group. There's a group that is dedicated to the Lord, dedicated to love, dedicated to mercy, and following Christ. Not judgmental of anyone, but love people and do right by people. Don't humiliate. Don't do all this stuff and rob the government. Do all this stuff. You know, you're living that life where everybody is equal in the eyes of God. We all created in the image of God. There's no uh, different race of people. We all of the human race, and we all is of God. So, so the thing is that that Christian, that Christian is uh, that's that's the real deal. This one is the real deal, and they living their life. Uh, that but there's a one that this one is hot, but there's one that is lukewarm. This is the one. This is the danger of that religious person who think that they are right because of uh, maybe their white lily skin, uh, maybe they cause they go to church. Uh, whatever they may be doing, or uh, maybe they be reading their Bible and things of that nature, and they just, I, you know, I just, I just waste my water here on my table, and I'm trying to get this thing, uh, get it uh, straight here. Uh, <laughs> I have my, my little water bottle here, and, and I kind of wet up everything, praise God, and uh, I would go out and get me some tissues, but I, napkins, but I won't be here to do that. Because I don't want to drop off with where I'm located. But anyway, I'm I'm here to say that there are that lukewarm believer, and this is the one that thinks they are they got it right. They don't like this group of people uh, because it's amazing. It's amazing. It's not having the not having Christ like love. Christ said, I've come not for the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And, and it takes them just because you think a person have their own ideas and thinking that they are not saved because they are not of what you think you are. And, and that's that's a that's a dangerous thing to be when you're in that position because you're so blind that you can't see your own error and you can see everybody else's error. But I'm here to tell you, love reaches hearts. It, love and kindness, and the, I, let, let me get my Bible here, uh, so that you may understand some things here. And and uh, uh, I, I just I'm moved by the Holy Ghost right now. Uh, I'm going to go to uh, Galatians chapter five, and and uh, and, and I'm going to read something to you because. If you're not in this way, if you if you're not here, I mean, with everybody, you you probably need to go back to the basics. Uh, uh, you need to probably go back a little bit to the basics. It it, it, let, it lets me know this right here. See, we now uh, we stay in the the seven. Uh, works of the flesh, okay. Uh, that, that's uh, okay. That we can understand that, okay. That that and that's what's happening there. Is this person is really not saved? This person here walking in the flesh is not saved, okay. And they are not confessing to be. They are not confessing to be saved. But it's the one that will still pray in the name of Jesus. And be doing evil to people. But I want you to say. I want you to watch this right here. But the fruit of the spirit. Is love. Love is going to determine. On where you stand. Do you love? Do you love? Do you love? Now let me tell you something. It doesn't say love those who love you. Even sinners and republicans do the same. It, it says love your enemy. Uh, love those who persecute you and say all men uh, against you, even falsely. Uh, those people do that. They are outside of the body of Christ. You, they can't be in Christ doing that, okay? You have to have love. When you are uh, 
threatening folk and telling people that they are of, of this devil and they, you don't know anything about them. And, and you're doing all this thing. You're just saying anything. That's uh, that's already crazy, okay? Uh, it says, so love is the very key because God is love. If you don't love, see, and you can look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and look at what charity is about. That's Charity is love in action. That's just like faith. Faith is believing, but it goes farther that you act on your belief that creates faith. Faith is not something that you you just can't be seen. Jesus said in this incident, when there was four, one man that was sick on his bed and could not get in the press of this house where Jesus was located, and three and four of his friends went on top of the roof, took the roof apart, and laid him let him down in the presence of Jesus, in front of Jesus. And the Bible says Jesus saw their faith. See, you got you see, faith is singing. Okay? You know, anyway, I, I want to bring that out. And love is loving. If you say you have love and you are not loving, you are a liar. And the truth is not in you. Okay, see, all right, okay, let, let's go here. <clears throat> um, for the fruit of the Spirit, okay, is love, joy. Are you happy? You have joy. Okay, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Okay, are you angry with everybody? Are you furious with people that you want to hurt them? I don't know about that kind of joy. Do you have peace? Are you worried? Are you stressed? Are you trusting in God? Do you have peace that passes all of that? If you don't, you need to seek the Prince of Peace. Okay, you need to seek the Prince of Peace. If there's no peace, we we need we need peace, and this is an inward peace. That that it that is not based on. Outward. This is inward. This is a not outward joy of what's going on, how things are going. When you're doing, when you getting what you want, you have joy. No, this joy that the world didn't give me, it's an inside joy that you have joy unspeakable and full of glory. Rejoice in the Lord. Paul said, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, Rejoice. And, and, and peace. The Prince of Peace, as I don't long suffering. That means you 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 deal with whatever you're going through. You got a tough skin. You, you're not uh, you you're not to the point where evil for evil. You're not going after people because you you know you, patience. Long suffering is patience. That that's a characteristics of a believer uh, going through and pay, going patiently. Through your trial and through your test, knowing that all things will work together for the good for those who love God and was called according to his purpose. You got to know your purpose, praise the name of God, for what God has for you, I don't care who you are, is for you. You don't have to try to steal nothing. You don't have to try to take nothing. It's your. You just do what you're supposed to do, praise God. And if it's for you, it's going to happen for you, you don't persuade. You can't make God do something. You can, I don't care. You can pray until you're blue in the face. If it's not the will of God, it's not going to take place. Okay. Uh, other way, do you have kindness? Kindness. Are you kind to people? Are you kind to those who don't are not kind to you? Are you kind? Are you go goodness? Goodness in your heart. Goodness and. Faithfulness. Faithful to who? Whoever you're dealing with. Faithful for God in God and faithful to your wife. Faithful to your, uh, your, your husband. Faithful to your children. Faithful or whatever you do, you are faithful in doing what you do. Okay? Self-control. Temperance. Can you control yourself? Flesh. Run away with you. Doing things that your flesh is out of control. 
uh, your sexuality is out of control. You can't control nothing. Praise God. Lust for desires. You can't control it. But even in the midst of that, there's still self-control. Controlling yourself. Self-control. He said, and against such of these things, there is no law. There's nothing to hold you back to bring forth a law to show you how to do these things. Because these things become natural. Because why? Because greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. The Spirit of God manifests this gift. There's no law to say you have to do this or do that. It's a desire that's down on the inside of us that by the Holy Spirit that manifests these things. If you're not manifesting these things, the Holy Spirit is not involved. Because the Holy I'm, I'm saying, look, you might miss a couple of these things. Amen. But out of love, it's going to manifest the other ones. Praise the name of God. It's not fruits. It's one fruit. Praise God. With uh, nine flavors. Woo! My God. And there's a fruit that I understand had nine flavors. One fruit tastes like nine. That's good. That's the Holy Spirit. Okay. And, and, and it says here, and, 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 and though, and these are of Christ who have crucified the flesh and the desire and the, and the passion and the desire of uh, of the, the, the of the flesh if we live in the spirit yes let us also walk if we live in the spirit let us also walk in the spirit let us not become conceived Provoking one another, envying one another. Well, oh, man, that, that's a that's a great word. Then I thank God for that. I just wanted to share that uh, with you for your hearing. And uh, so <laughs> that was a that was that good. I think my, my, I think my notes and stuff is is dried here. So let me uh, talk about just I I, I said to you I, I'm talking about. <laughs> The thoughts of the heart. Mm -hmm. The thoughts of the heart. And I'm going to read this particular passage of scripture here for your hearing. And I have a lot of them, but I'm going to, and next week I'll probably read some of the same one. And this is going to come from Matthew chapter 15 and verse 17 down to verse 20. And as I do read that, I will begin to elaborate on those scriptures. And then I'm going to give you a, so, a few other things. And then, uh, uh, we on here about 20 minutes to 25 minutes, so I, I, I know I'm, I'm not going to hope to go an hour on it. I'm going to cut you a little slack, and I know that uh, the attention of a of an adult is about 25 minutes or so. So, But if you get tired, you can always stop it and come back and re-listen to this. But I want to read this particular passage of Scripture, and I believe this is the King James translation. I don't know for sure, but I, I printed it off my by off my my. Uh, uh, my sword, the uh, my Bible uh, uh, software, and and uh, it says, "Do not, do not ye yet understand." The question Jesus is talking here to this to his disciples. See, do you understand? Because see, the Pharisees and the said they had trying to trap Jesus. They tried to trap him, always trap him, but he was too intelligent for that. That whatsoever entereth in the mouth goeth into the stomach and is cast out through the drop. Other words, it's eliminated. Whatever go in your mouth, it goes to your stomach, and your stomach is designed. First of all, what you if you're eating something. Your teeth is going to crush it. The saliva, saliva in your mouth is going to break it down. And it's going to go down in your the surface into your stomach. Where in your stomach is acid. So strong it will eat a hole in metal. But it's inside your stomach. That's why people have a real problem with acid reflux. That means that little, a little uh, surface is inside your throat. It's not closing all the way up. And some of that acid is bubbling back out. So it goes in your stomach. And then your stomach begins to digest it, contract, 
and mesh, mush it up. And then from there, it goes to your small intestines. And from your small intestine, it goes throughout your body. And what your body does not use, it goes into your colon, your large intestine, and then out of, it eliminates out of your body. That's what he is actually saying here. I just gave you a, a scientific review. Of, uh, and I'm not into science, but hey, thank you, Holy Spirit. Praise God. Hallelujah. And the Holy Ghost knows how to put things together. Because I sure don't have a clue, uh, amen, but it, it it went just like uh, that happens. But anyway, it says, goes out and eliminates your body. But, oh, I like that word, but those things which proceed out of the mouth. In other words, this comes out of your mouth. Huh? See, it comes from another source. Comes out of your mouth, coming forth from the heart. Huh? And I'm not talking about the heart that pumps blood, that bu mu that muscle about the size of your fist, that pumps blood throughout the body, and it squeezes, pumping the blood, a pump, and it pumps blood all over the body. I'm not talking about that heart. I'm talking about another heart, and I'll explain that to you later on uh, when I finish reading this. And they, what, what comes out of your mouth? The words comes out of your mouth. Those things are unclean and defile a person. It says a man. For out of the heart, huh? out of the heart perceive reasoning, Disputing evil thoughts. Now, when I looked at the part I just covered, reasoning and disputing, that comes from the amplified. But it says here, perceive evil thoughts. <laughs> this is not the word of God that's coming out of your mouth like it should be. These are other things that's coming out because you have put in some things you have heard. The Bible says, take heed on what you hear. For what measure that you hear, it will be measured back to you again. In other words, if you hear the wrong thing, people don't research enough stuff. They hear a lie, they believe that lie, and they begin to speak that lie, and they don't have a clue on the truth. They're just saying what others have said. But if you want to know the truth, you need to have the Bible. You will know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. That's the word of God. So if you don't do research on things, don't think that what you what's coming out of your mouth is right, because it's most likely it's going to be wrong. If someone tell you something, and it's in the Bible, you need to also find what they are saying. And make sure you rightly divide the word of truth so you will know what's right. Because you will have to give account. No other person will give account for the individual lives. The person, I, Jackie Evans, is going to have to answer to God for my life. You, you is going to answer to God for your life. Okay? Evil thoughts. What such evil thoughts? In other words, when you have evil thoughts, this is a manifestation of evil thoughts. Murder. Not only the Bible lets us know that if you hate your brother, you are a murderer. So hate. You got racial hate. You got hate. People hate one another. They hate political parties. They hate their neighbor. They'll hate whites. They'll hate blacks. This is, you are a murderer. Huh? I'm telling you, you better realize, and you hear my voice, and whenever you hear this voice, you need to realize that this walk in Christ is serious, and it's an eternal decision that you make, that you will have to give account, and you will have to, your payday is eternal. 
If you're in Christ, Christ paid the debt. But if you're not, and you continue in this evil way, you will give an account. It's a murderer. Fornication, which is sexual vice. Any kind of sexual activity doesn't matter. As long, but the only one that God honors is between husband and wife, male and female. That's the only one. So if you are male and having sex, that's wrong. If you are female and you're having sex, it's wrong. Any kind of sexual activity. Not only that, but it starts in your thought. It thought, Jesus said, if you looketh on a woman to lust after her, you have committed adultery already in your heart. The question is, Moses said, he said, now, he said look here, that they, 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 they were trying to trap him about this thing that, of, 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 uh, for, of adultery and whatever. But Jesus texted a little bit farther in the deeper part of the core. And he stated, now you can believe what you want to say, but I want to believe what Jesus says and the apostles, what the apostles say. Now they got apostles today and prophets today. They saying a whole lot of stuff. They saying who going to win the election? Who going to win this and who going to do that? They're saying all kinds of stuff. They're saying you're going to get blessed. You're going to have a house. You're going to get married here. They're saying a lot of things. But I choose to lock my faith and belief on the apostles and the prophets of old and the word of our Lord Jesus Christ. Any other prophets out here today, you must take with a grain of salt because they might miss it. That means they will always. They might miss it most of the time and some of the time they may hit it on the head. But you cannot base your life on what someone is telling you outside the Bible. Okay, let me get back here. All right. Adultery, fornication, theft. Are you stealing? Are you taking something? False witness. Are you lying? Are you lying? Are you saying something that a liar told you? That means you lying. If I tell you a lie and you don't research that and you repeat my lie, you just told a lie also. Huh? So you got to be careful on what you hear to make sure it is not a lie. Because the Bible lets us know no liar would inherit the kingdom of God. He said, you are of your father. And the deeds of your father you would do. He was a liar and a murderer from the beginning. He said, you are of your devil, of your father the devil, because he is the liar. He's the author of a liar. So if a person is going to lie, 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 God is not their father. The devil is their father. You may get some things on this end. And you can, let me tell you something, you can tell so many lies until you get numb and you are believing that lie. I'll cover that in a little bit. Okay, uh, let me read this, finish up my scripture here. Blaspheme, which is slander. These things are the things which are unclean. And defy a man, but to wash with unclean hands defieth not a man. I'm gonna stop there on this because I'm gonna read this part next week, and I'll go into uh, James chapter three from this one. But I'm gonna stop here on this, and and I may not be able to get into the other part, but I'm gonna cover something else. Uh, let me get this in my notes here. The definition of heart. Uh, P. 
People generally consider the head, the brains, as the central part of a human activity. Oh, you, know, you know, or the head, the, the brains is the the source of all. That's that's what they think. But your brain is going to material. We'll go back to dust. Even though there's the, this this thing is great in thinking, and humans doesn't use no more than about ten or fifteen percent of the brain power. Uh, so, but 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 uh, because sin caused problems. I, I think people uh, had. I think Adam brain was not corrupt with sin, and he thought much greater than that what we think now. And some folks have developed their brain a little bit stronger than others, and they can do complex uh, things. Even though even slaves in times was mathematical genius. that They, they had to, to develop this. So I, I'm not talking about that brain, that head and, and within the brain uh, as, a, as the center of direction of human activity. However, the Bible speaks of the heart as the center out of the issues of it flow life. And, and I'll cover that in, in Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23. And also chapter in Luke chapter 6 and 25. I'm not going to be able to cover those tonight, but we'll get them next time. When the Bible speaks of the heart, it is referring to a physical or it's not referring, it's not talking about a physical organ or, or this it's not physical you know what pump blood throughout the body brother the heart is the the spiritual part the Bible the spiritual part of it it it, it talks about the total person is it is is the it's man's intelligence it's man emotions it's man will uh it's man what's in what make you who you are and what makes me who I am, that's your heart, that's your soul, that's your mind, that's who you are, that's the soul is part of you, your thinking faculty, your emotions, your intelligence, hmm? and, and we can find that, you can look at all that in Mark chapter of, uh, 7. And and I'm going uh, to uh, uh, stop there with it here. I, I'm not going to co cover that anymore. Now, <clears throat> Christian doctrine, it kind of teaches us that sin is anything that goes against God's will. It goes against God's will and God's character, which is love. <laughs> See, God's character, let me tell you something. Huh? If you ain't walking in love, you're walking in sin. Just if you're not walking in just you, something wrong, holiness and, and long suffering, some say that sin is easily avoided or overcome at the thought level. At the thought level. In other words, you have this thought. And you deal with the thought. But if you don't deal with the thought, it doesn't stay a thought. You dwell on the thought. And then the thought conceive in you and now you bring forth. That's like saying when, that's saying when God is not tempted, but every man is tempted as he is drawn away with his own lust and entice. And when lust is conceived, it brings forth sin. And when sin manifests itself, it brings forth death. The reward is death. And I talked about that uh, on, on my on my podcast one time, that the penalty of sin was death. And the last one I talked about was where is where where is your trust? Where your trust? You're trusting in God or you're trusting in man? 
Are you looking for man to fix the problems of this world? Or are you looking to God and God's will be done? Are you praying about what God want? Or you want what you want and regardless what God says, it's what you want and what you think is best for whatever you are seeking for. You determine that somebody is better for this position than this position. Your job, who in charge, whatever. You feel that because you know so much, you praying for this person and you're not seeking the will of God. You have thought in your mind that this individual or whatever is better than this particular person because, but you ain't asking God, God, what is your desire? What is your will? What's your will for me? What's your will for my family? What's your will for the community? What's your will, Lord? When you walk out the house, do you pray and ask God to protect you as you travel? Or do you depend on your own ability to guide, to drive that vehicle and use defensive driving skills? I do that, but I'm, at the same time, I want God to protect me for the unseen things. Because people are saying, and they're prophesying lying, and people are believing those things to think, well, this is going to happen. Okay, so we, we have to uh, deal with our thoughts at the thought level. Deal with it then on the onset of a thought. Because if a thought go in your mind, you can't stop thoughts from going in your mind. You can't stop a bird from flying over your head, but you can stop them from building a nest in your hair. In other words, things that you have the control over, you need to deal with. Things that you can't, you have no power over, there's nothing you can do about that. Okay? Uh, so, before it becomes ingrained in us, in our lives, through activity... Because it's going to leave. And it's, we're going to act on our thoughts. Now I pray that our thoughts is in line with the word of God. And we can act on the word of God. And do what the Bible says. But. Continue. To think about sin more. It's, you're thinking about it. In other words, the thought hits you. You continue in sin, the more you do it, the more your heart, your heart is going to get hard. You, you, just, you just continue to do what you do. A story that a pirate had, was robbing, robbing ships and terrorizing the, the commercial in the Caribbeans in the 19th century. He was fully uh, captured with captured ships and condemned and execute those people. And before he before his death, he acknowledged that when he had committed his first murder, it's like a serial killer. Once you do something, uh, kill one person one time, it becomes a habit. You become engraved in it and you're killed again. That's just like they said, if you have a dog in the country and the dog start eating eggs or killing your chickens, if you don't deal with that dog and distinguish that dog, he's going to eat your chickens and eat the eggs because he has got a taste for the chicken. He got a taste for the egg. So in the country, back in the day, they would take that dog out and shoot that dog. They didn't euthanize him back then like they, like they do now. And they, they're doing all this stuff because this dog was a threat to your livestock. So, 
And, a, and, a, and once, a, once, once a person, this person here, once they uh, doing the shipwreck and, and, and robbing ships and doing all these things, the first time it was a little bit trouble inside. He had a little conviction, but it went unchecked. His conviction went unchecked. So that, that means that if you do something and you are convicted of it because you you acted on your thoughts, now you are convicted because the Holy Spirit you comes to convict people of sin. And if you deal with that and confess that to God, you can get on the right track. But if you don't, it stays unforgiven. And the next thing you do, you do it again. And the more you do it, the harder your hearts get. Until you can keep doing something against the will of God. And now you can now sleep peacefully. You have no conviction no remorse, no guilt, because you have done this so many times until now there's no conviction. Let me tell you something. If you can continue to lie and do evil, it's a good possibility that God has turned you over to a reprobated mind. A mind void of judgment. Because you done lied so many times. And you done did so much evil. And you are in your mind. I'm innocent. I never did nothing wrong. I never told a lie. I never did nothing. God don't have to forgive me. Because I have not did anything. You are in a dangerous. Dangerous position. And as long as you are living. You are okay. But the day that your heart. Stop beating. And you leave this earth. You're going to find yourself in a position, in a, in a place where there's no return. Like the rich man in hell who lifted up his eyes and realized if I could only get a little finger of, of water on my parching lips, it'll make me feel a whole lot better. But you can't come back. No one can come back. So if you have seen your aunt, your uncle have come back, it was a familiar, familiar spirit. It wasn't from God. It was a familiar spirit. Because when you leave this planet, you're not going to come back. You're not. Unless you may be like, because Elijah, e Elijah and Enoch, Never died. They may come back because they never died. They were just transformed, translated, transformed. Elijah went up in a world in a, in a chariot of fire, of fire, and Enoch was not found because God took him. But other than that, no sir. The only one came back. Jesus was rose rose from the dead, and he conquered death. He, he conquered death, and he's glorified. Nothing can touch him. He can walk through walls. He can eat a meal. He can get on a cloud and, and travel out of space back to heaven. That, that, that's, that's the destiny, huh? huh? Okay, all right. Well, let's say here. Let me get ready to get out of here. That's the thing about sin. When you first indulge in, in it, you most likely feel a little bit grieved, I mentioned. But the second, third, and fourth time, you then now begin to grieve less. Let's say, let's say this right here. Now, let's say you're a Christian and you're, in, you're single and all of a sudden you find yourself in a relationship, or let's say you get saved and you're in a relationship that you're not married, you're cohabitating and you're having sex, male and female, and you're, in, uh, you're having an intercourse and all of a sudden you start feeling something 
You're like, oh no, this is not right. I, I, I don't feel good. This is not good. But you rationalize with yourself and figure, well, okay, I, God understand me. I have needs and, 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 and I'm not married, but uh, we committed to one another. And you stay in that relationship and you keep doing what you're doing. Now, the grace of God may stay with you and still work with you. But the more you do that, you feel less guilty. You feel less convicted of what you have done. It may be now somebody may come to you and God used them to bring a word to you. And when that word come, it penetrates your heart and you now feel a certain way again. That's God. That's the love of God. God is calling you. God is now calling you because you have been in a relationship and, and, and you don't feel guilty no more. But a word comes to you, not condemning you, just a word about the love of Jesus. And all of a sudden you start feeling the tug on your heart. You start feeling the conviction of the spirit of God. God is saying, I love you. I see you. I know what you're doing. My eyes is in every place, beholding good and evil. And I love you and I'm calling you. I'm not have given up on you. That's God. However, if somebody give you a word and you resent the word, you angry with the word, that's a dangerous place to be. Because may you have may have went a little bit farther. Soon you you wouldn't feel anything at all. You don't feel it now. You will have may have a now a seared conscience with a hot iron. Your conscience may be seared, but if you have a conviction, that means your conscience is still alive for God to move and God to touch you. So the way to overcome sin is to fight the good fight of faith. Is to fight at the very beginning when you when something happened. When you first come under upon that thought, or the inkling or the temptation, that was for God delivered me from temptation. But see, God does not tempt man. But man is tempted when he's drawn away. See, you got to be drawn away with your own lust and your entice. Fight your good fight at the very beginning before it dull your conscience. Today, practice the secret of a fight. Sin at the very beginning. Cut it off at the very start. When it's just a thought and a notion of a temptation. Uh, let me read this scripture here in uh, um, First Timothy. Uh uh, yeah, uh, First Timothy. First Timothy. Let's see here. First Timothy, uh, chapter six. And uh, see just what I got to get here. <clears throat> okay, Timothy. Uh, for six only. Okay, here we go. Timothy. First Timothy six. Okay, first Timothy chapter six, and uh, ba da dum bum. Mm, let's see here. Uh, let me go a little further back. I'm gonna read verse. I'm I'm just gonna read uh, verse twelve. I mean uh, eleven. But you, O man of God, flee these things. Hmm. Let me go back a little bit further than that. 
Now, this is probably going to be my only scripture I'm going to read, and I'm going I'm to get out of here, but I'm, I'm going to go back to uh, chapter, chapter 6 and verse 3. Okay. If anyone teaches otherwise and does not consent to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which according to godliness, he is proud knowing nothing but is obsessed with dispute and arguments over words from which come envy and strife, reveling, even evil sedition. Unless wrangling of men corrupt mind and destitute of the truth, who supposed that godliness is a mean of gain. From such withdraw yourself. This person have decided that I'm in ministry for money. And the more money I make, the more godly I am. That had to start in their minds, somewhere in their thoughts. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we will carry nothing out of this world. And having food and clothing, with these we should be content, satisfied. But those who desire to be rich, those who desire to be rich, where did that come from? It starts in your thought. You have looked at others, uh, what they have, because you came into the world. A lot of people came into the world. Didn't have, you, you didn't come in with a, with a silver spoon. Other, some did, and, and, and they're in trouble right now unless God changed them. But most of us, we, have, we came in with nothing. Our parents didn't have nothing, and now we got something. And now we have the desire to be rich or richer. Now, you fall into temptation, that thought. And now it's a snare, and unto many foolish and harmful lusts. Not only sexual lust, you lust after material stuff, which drown it. Have you ever thought about somebody drowning in water? You are now drowning men in destruction and perdition. For the love, see, you can't love God and money, mammon. You, 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 you would draw the one and you will despise the other. You will love one and hate the other. But you can't love God and money or material stuff. See, that's all things that happens in your mind and you linger on it and you want to get it some kind of way. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil for which some have strayed from the faith. See, it's so easy to stray from the faith when you have love for money, in which their greediness has pierced themselves thoroughly with many sorrows. But you, O man of God. Okay, now we're talking to a different person now. We're talking to the men and women of God. If you're a woman of men of God, you better listen to what he's saying. But you, O oh man of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness. Are you pursuing righteousness? Godliness. Faith. 
Are you pursuing faith? Love. Are you pursuing love? What about patience, long-suffering? What about gentleness? Are you pursuing gentleness? Fight. In order to pursue these things, you have in order to resist this kind of greed and greed and love of money, fight. Fight. Not people, not fighting for Trump, fighting for Harris, fighting for the country. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life. That's Jesus Christ. To which you were also called and have confessed a good confession in the presence of many witnesses. You, you can't beat that, huh? Well, I'm going to stop right there. I've been, on, I've been going on for an hour now, so I'll, I'll cover this next week. And I, because I had a lot of scriptures, a lot of things I didn't cover, I'm going to jump in. I'm going to talk about David. I'm going to talk about a whole lot of other things. I'm going to uh, Proverbs. And I'm going to hang in Proverbs there a while. So, uh, anyway, you guys be blessed. And I'll see you if the Lord said the same. And next Wednesday, I believe I'll be here. Next Wednesday, next Wednesday, I think I will. Yeah. Anyway, you be blessed. And I'm going to jump on out here. Jump, jump, jump. Took a beating and his whole body was broke for Spoke for, do it, we know who the world was broke for Abraham had it, matter of fact, that's what he's known for Faith, y'all, do it, we were saved by grace If you got it, we can sing it by the way it run a race, yeah. That means we can see it on your face If the faith don't act, then it really ain't fake And that really ain't the case, cause faith ain't fake Better have you trying to act out the word every day Every Christian has faith, it's a gift, we should use it Some distort the view of it and others just abuse it It can be irrational and make it give your life up Christ and not to get a nice truck, right? Just look, you know, you gotta trust God when it seems hard, man. Faith is a must, dog. You gotta lead, lead with it. Jump, 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 jump,